There are many tools to use in AutoCAD, but before we can use them, we must know where they are or how to get to them. At first, you will need to hunt around for the tools that you want to use, but in no time, you're going to learn where everything is. In fact, your muscles will remember exactly where they need to move the mouse to to get to your commands. The main form of input in AutoCAD is the mouse. A typical mouse has three buttons, though many users will take advantage of something like a five button mouse or a trackball. It's up to you. But all you need is a standard two button mouse with a scroll wheel. The scroll wheel acts as the third button. Each button has a specific function. Button number one, which is the left click button, is your main form of input and selection. You click this button to select an object, like this circle, or this square, or these two lines. The right click button can be set to one of several different functions. Out of the box, the right click will bring up a shortcut window. This is very handy. Many users prefer though to have the right click function as the enter key. That's a big time saver and this is my personal preference. I'll show you how to make this change. To customize the right click functions of your mouse, you will need to open the options window. To do this, open the options window by moving the crosshairs to the application menu. That's the big red A at the top left hand of the screen. Click it with the left click on your mouse. Now move your cursor down to the Options button. Select it by clicking, and this will open up your Options windows. There are many different tabs that are on here that get you to different types or different areas of settings. To customize the right click function of your mouse, you want to go to the User Preferences tab. Just move your mouse over the tab and left click. To customize the right click action of your mouse, click here. These are your different options, but what you can do is set how it functions. Typically you have about two choices. One will either make it open up a shortcut window or it will press the enter key. Right clicking then will be like pressing the enter key. You can also press the space bar in AutoCAD and while you're editing something or while you're in the middle of a command. The space bar and the enter key act in the same way in AutoCAD, unless you're typing in text, of course. But you can make your mouse's right click button act like the enter key or space bar key. What that does, it keeps your hand on the mouse so you can start a command and finish it without having to take the time to move your hand to the keyboard. That's why I prefer it, but it's up to you. To turn off the shortcut menu, just click here. This will repeat the last command that acts like the enter key. This is when you're in the default mode. That means you don't have any objects selected, you're not in the middle of a command, it's just the regular functioning state of AutoCAD. Now, when you're in edit mode, that means you have something selected. That's when the right click functionality can be altered here as well. One thing you're going to find out about AutoCAD is that there are a tremendous amount of ways to customize its functionality. Some people never change a thing. Some people only tweak it just a little bit, but other people go crazy and completely customize it so that many users can't even recognize it as AutoCAD. I don't recommend that. Somewhere in the middle, I think, is the best option, but it's up to you. Click here for an edit mode to repeat the last command, but this is one you may want to keep the shortcut menu on because while you're working with something, you might want that shortcut. And in command mode, this means when you've started a command. So you have three basic options of functionality. You have your default mode, you have your edit mode, which means when you have something selected, and you have your command mode. That's when you're starting something, like you're drawing a line and you're right in the middle of it. Now one thing you can do to get the best of both worlds, and I really like doing this, is I click here and I turn on the time sensitive right click. This means that when I right click, it acts like I'm pressing the enter key. But if I right click and hold for 250 milliseconds, and by the way, I've never timed this, so I don't know how accurate it really is. But if you right click and hold, it will bring up the shortcut menu and you still have your enter key functionality. I really like doing this. This is how I typically work with my right click customization on. This is a pretty important customization because working with a mouse is your main form of working with AutoCAD. This is how the majority of your input will be done. Find the setting that works best for you. This is the way I will have this on for the remainder of the video training here, but you can do it however you want. That's the beauty of AutoCAD. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again throughout this series that you can customize AutoCAD however you want it to run. When finished, 
click Apply and Close, and then OK. So now when I right click, it's going to act like the Enter key, which will repeat my last command. And my last command was to open up the Options window. But if I right click and hold, my shortcut window comes up. This shortcut window is very useful. So don't turn it off completely. I really suggest you use the time sensitive clicking. But this gives you access to your last command or your last few commands. So if I wanted to draw a line, I can. I click the button and I start drawing my lines. Very useful. As you see, moving the mouse moves your crosshairs in the drawing. You're not changing the drawing, you're just putting your pick box, which is that square right in the middle of the crosshairs somewhere. And wherever that pick box is, that's what you're going to pick. As you hover over these objects, they become dashed or highlighted. That means AutoCAD is telling you, hey, when you click here, this is what you're going to select. To unselect something, press the Escape key. Now you also have your scroll wheel, which is right in the middle. If you roll it back and forth, that's zooming in and out. But that doesn't change your drawing any. It just sort of changes your perspective. You get a little closer or a little farther away. There was a time in AutoCAD when you couldn't do this, and it made things very difficult. But here's another little trick that you can use with the scroll wheel. If you click and hold the scroll wheel, it operates as the pan command so that you can move around. So you can zoom in, pan across, zoom in some more, or zoom out. That's very handy. One other trick that you can use with your scroll wheel is to double click it. That does a zoom extents. We'll talk more about what zoom extents is and a lot of different ways and how you can use the zoom command in another section. But the zoom extents will zoom all the way out to display the extents of your drawing line work in your workspace area, which is very nice. That's a great way to navigate in your file or in your drawing very easily and very quickly. I can pan around, zoom in real tight to this corner. And now let's say I want to get out to the other corner really quickly of my drawing. Well, I can pan, 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 pan. Yeah, this is going nowhere fast. Or I can double click. It zooms all the way out. And now I can pan and zoom and get there very quickly. So you'll find yourself navigating through your file with your mouse very easily, especially with the scroll wheel. Zoom in and out, pan around, zoom extents. That's probably how you will do 95% of the navigation in your file. Now your crosshairs are another important tool. They are your target. Where your mouse goes, the crosshairs go. Where your crosshairs are is where your new lines, your text, your objects, anything you draw or create will be placed in your file. I prefer to have my crosshairs fill the screen. I do this so that I can use them as a guideline when I draw. To change this, but again, only if you want to, Open up the Options window. You can right click and hold if you change that setting and go to Recent Input and go to the Options, or you can do it just like we showed earlier. Click on the Application menu and come down to Options. Now, this time we want to go to the Display tab. It's up here towards the left. Now, come over here to your crosshair size. This is a percentage. You can make it as small as 1% or as large as 100%. Click in this box and type in the number you want or click and hold on this slider bar and move it back and forth, either way. Again, in AutoCAD, you'll find that there are a lot of different ways to input information into your drawing. Now, this is a percentage of your screen. At 100%, the crosshairs will extend 100% across and up and down. At 50%, they'll only fill half the screen. When you have the size you want, just click OK. And then you'll see here my crosshairs fit the screen. I like this because I use it as a drawing aid. I can quickly see if something is collinear, if they're lined up correctly, or not. The pick box is still right where I need it to be. Again, this is user preference. A lot of people don't like it to be this big. A lot of people will have it around 50%. That's up to you. It's still pretty big. I can still use it as a guide. 
but it helps me to know a little bit better sometimes exactly where my pick box is at. Again, it's up to you. The crosshairs consist of three major items, your vertical line, your horizontal line, and the pick box. These three items are there for visual reference. The two lines are perfectly straight and they intersect at the middle of the pick box. This point of intersection is the point where you will select objects or insert new objects. We mentioned that earlier. When you move your crosshairs off of the drawing area, which is this big box right here, you're going to see something a little bit different. You're going to see an arrow. So when I move it to one of these selection options, to the command line or to my Windows toolbar, or anywhere in the ribbon, or the quick access toolbar, etc., it turns into a pointer. But on the main drawing area, this large black area again, you'll have them as crosshairs. This is where all of your objects go. There are two main spaces in which you will draw, model space and paper space. Model space is where your drawing objects go. Paper space is where your annotation and sheets objects go, like a title block or some text dimensions, your drawing border, etc. We'll cover these two spacers in good detail later on in another section. One other area that I want to mention before we go is the info center. That's right up here. This is where you can get a lot of different information. You can go there for help. You can go there to log on to Autodesk 360. You can search for different product updates and find a lot of information. We'll go into more detail about it later on. But every space on your screen has a reason, has a purpose, and is a useful tool that you want to make sure you look at.